vector network analyzer. Well, um, what, what the hell is a network? Um, <laughs> okay, so um, a, a network is, for, for the purposes of this exercise, um, a collection of uh, passive electrical elements. So uh, re resistance, inductance, and capacitance, any, any sort of combination of those. Uh, and we're talking about passive elements here. Um, so that in electronics ter electronic terms can be called a network. Um, so it could, be, um, it could be something like a, a filter. Um, uh, so like for instance, we've got here RLC circuit, um, a, a filter. It could be a, um, a transmission line. So, uh, you know, lump of, lump of coax connected to an antenna or a dummy load or open or short circuit. Um, uh, it, any of those will act as a, uh, as a network. Um, and it could be an antenna. Um, so in this case, we've got shown a, uh, looks like a trap, tri-band trap vertical antenna. Righto, so um, any, so any questions to start off with on, on what, what a network is? Everybody happy? Yeah. <coughs> yep. All good? Righto. You guys in the SES obviously can see one because there is one right there. But um, for, for those on Zoom, this, this is the little box that I'm, that I'm talking about. It's got, it's got no case. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's pretty basic. Um, but, you know, what do you get for $130? A three gigahertz, 50 kilohertz to three gigahertz uh, magic little box. Righto, um, so back to uh, the PowerPoint slide, wherever that was. Righto, um, so as I, as I said, a network can be um, uh, any passive uh, combination of components. The way a ve vector network uh, analyzer works, um, imagine applying a sweep, a swept voltage. So swept in terms of frequency, um, uh, applying um, a sweep to the input. So applies a voltage, um, measures the current going in. Um, it also measures the um, reflected uh, power, essentially. So like, like an SWR bridge, it measures what's going in, measures what comes, comes back out. Um, and it can also be set to measure what comes out of the network at, at port number two. Um, in other words, you could, um, you could set it to look into, you, you can see this little uh, uh, bandpass filter here. Um, you could look uh, in, into the bandpass filter at the input and look at voltage and current um, that's going in, um, the, uh, what gets reflected back, um, uh, and or what comes out the, the right-hand side, the, the output. So, so again, we're applying um, a voltage which is, which is swept in frequency. So the vector network analyzer, this little box, you can set the limits of frequency anywhere between 50 kilohertz and uh, three gigahertz. So you can say, show me the two meter amateur band, for instance, you know, 144 to 148 megahertz, and, and it'll, it'll just sweep that and, and display it. Um, now, um, the, the term vector network analyzer, as opposed to scalar net network analyzer, what that means is um, the vector portion is um, not only um, does it tell you what voltage is being, or what, does it look at what voltage is being applied and what current is being applied, um, it also looks at the phase relationship between those two. So um, um, if, if, for instance, it's feeding a, an inductive load, then um, you end up with um, the current lagging the voltage. If it's feeding a capacitive load, the current leads the voltage. Um, so imagine 
um, looking at the input voltage and current, the output voltage and current, but looking at the, um, the relationships in terms of phase. So you can see you know, how the phase changes across, across the network. Um, all that information um, tells you or can tell you a lot about what's going on in the network. It, it can allow you to, to look at the performance of, of the network or it could be as simple as, you know, tell me the SWR. If the network is your, is your piece of co coaxial cable fitted to, you know, feeding an antenna, for instance, tell me how the SWR varies over the, over the band. So you can look for, you know, dips and things and all that sort of thing. All right, so far? Yep. Everybody happy? Yep. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Okay. Um, so, um, so it applies a swept voltage. It plots, as I said, um, what either what comes out the other end or what's reflected back. Um, for instance, you could look at the loss across the network versus frequency, um, uh, a la a filter. Um, it uh, can also plot the input impedance. So that's the relationship between the voltage and current. Um, and again, it's not just resistance. It's, it can tell you um, in vector form, or it can tell you in a simple form, you've got a, um, a resistance and a capacitance of, you know, three ohms and 32 picofarads. That, you know, it'll, it'll actually tell you uh, right down to that, that level of detail. Um, so you can, you can look at the impedance. Um, as I said, you can look at the SWR. So you might be feeding an antenna or a piece of coax or something. It'll, it'll give you the SWR um, or uh, the return loss, which is the same thing, but upside down, back to front. Um, and the, <coughs> the, other, um, <coughs> the other little trick that it can do um, it, it can tell you the delay, the time delay um, across the network. Or um, if, for instance, the network is a lump of coaxial cable and the other end doesn't, isn't terminated in a load, if it's open circuit or short circuit, um, it will tell you how far away down that cable in, in millimetres that short circuit or open circuit is. Um, it can tell you the loss across the cable. So if you've got a lump of coaxial cable and you want to know, you know, how lossy is it at 70 centimetres or 1296 or, or, you know, whatever frequency, um, you, can, you can do that. You can even, you know, you can plot it against frequency. So you can, you can look at, uh, at the loss. Um, so for instance, you might have <coughs> a piece of cable, piece of coaxial cable, it's got a fault in it. Um, say it's gone open circuit somewhere, but you don't know where that open circuit is. Um, the vector network analyzer will tell you um, that it's got an open circuit or it might have a inductive or a capacitive short or something like that. Um, but it'll tell you where it is. So how far in millimeters from the excitation end, um, you need to go and look for your, your faulty cable. It might be a connector or whatever. Um, so uh, to me, uh, this is just uh, <laughs> an amazingly wonderful piece of kit. So <clears throat> um, can you see, uh, you guys got the, the three pictures up on the screen now? Yep. yep. <laughs> yep. Righto. So second hand, you can buy a 30 kilohertz to three gigahertz vector network analyzer for the a special price, $3,590, excluding GST, <coughs> oh, well. second hand. Um, or you can buy a 900 megahertz VNA with a nice four inch screen for $80. Or, and this is the one that I've got, you can buy a 50 kilohertz to three gigahertz VNA <coughs> um, for $130. The, um, as you could see from the one I held up before, it's, um, it isn't in a box. It's just an open bit of circuitry uh, with a touch screen, uh, input, and, uh, input and output uh, ports, the SMA connectors, 
um, it's, got a, it's got an on-off switch, <clears throat> and under here, which you can't see, um, there's three little buttons. But it's all done by touch screen, <coughs> um, and it just works. <laughs> now, um, if I was going to buy one, oh, in fact, we, we can talk about it at the end. Um, uh, uh, I, I was faced with the decision, do I buy the $80 big one with a four inch screen, or do I buy the $130 little one with the two inch screen, which is getting pretty cozy, I've got to say, with old eyes. <coughs> um, but I actually went for the, the, um, the little one because it covers uh, up to three gigahertz. Um, however, I, I reckon things are changing pretty quickly. In six months time, you can probably, you'll probably be able to buy one of these um, in the four inch screen version. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you can already buy um, cases for them or you can buy them, particularly in the US, um, they, they, they come already in a box, you know, so you don't have to um, put it in a box yourself. Mark, is there any room for an external display? Um, yes, there is, Martin, and uh, I will uh, we'll get to that. It's it has a, uh, a a USB connection. You can connect it to a PC um, or a phone, apparently, and you get an external display. And I'll I'll show you I'll show you that um, towards towards the end. <clears throat> All good. Any other questions? Righto. Back to uh, Dooley here. <coughs> Pum, 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 if I can find it. Here we go. All right, <coughs> next topic. Go. Can't see anything. Share your screen. Can't see anything. No, you can't. Why not? Ah, that's a bit tricky. <laughs> well done. Thank you. You gotta push the button, you gotta share the screen. Now can you see it? Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Here we go, more music. Yippee. sharing that. Changing the sharing is lots of fun here, by the way. <laughs> um, Elizabeth, my wife, uh, suggested I, I put it all into PowerPoint and just run it from PowerPoint, which, you know, maybe I'd do that next time. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Righto. So, um, as I, uh, can you see this on the screen? Can you see? Um, yep. 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 As I said, um, by um, one way that you can um, operate it and in fact for amateurs it's probably the most common way um, plot of frequency against SWR so um, here you can see big sharp dip in SWR um, uh, and that's um, on the right hand side there that's that's kind of how it, it um, would work so a sweep generator it's all built into the little box um, excites the um, um, the antenna in this case, um, and um, you 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 look at the out the outputs in in terms of uh, the SWR. So as I said, you can set it you can set it to um, from you know 3.5 to 3.7 megahertz if you want. You can set it from you know 150 kilohertz through to three gigahertz if you want. It gets pretty busy, <laughs> but if you don't know what what sort of antenna you've got, um, then it's, you know, one that it'll, it'll tell you, it'll tell you where it resonates. Um, righto. Uh, what I've been using it for is, um, since I bought it, which is about two weeks ago, is uh, designing filters. So I've, I've put a masthead preamp up. It's all Martin's fault, chasing satellites. Um, yeah. Put a masthead preamp up and I, I needed to get rid of some intermodulation. Um, so I've been playing with um, filters and um, this little box um, just allows you to look see what's going on inside 
and and uh, as I said, the um, you can also use it with uh, coaxial cable um, to see to look at loss in the cable um, to with with a little care and thought you can work out what the impedance of the cable is not directly but um, by putting different loads on the end and seeing what the effect is um, you can uh, look at the the loss across the cable you can look for any um, any discontinuities in it um, you can also you could use it in reverse, not directly, but just by thinking about it. Um, by and and I've 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 done this because I was making some um, some coaxial cable stubs for my filter, um, quarter wave stubs, um, to work out the velocity factor by um, cutting a piece of coax, measuring um, how long it is, you know, looking on the vector network analyzer um, at at where where it resonated. And you can sort of work backwards and say, oh, okay, the um, the velocity factor is 0.66, or um, because I was actually using foam coax, it was actually around 0.8 something. So um, in interesting. Anyway, um, great uh, great fun. Any more questions before we go on to the next bit of video? No, I don't think so. Hey, Tony. No, I don't think so. We've done very well. Okay, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Right, I'll try and remember to share this time. <laughs> I, I, I got to, I got to share the toys here. Right, here we go. Oh. Sick of this. Very, very cute. Probably get sick of this music after a while. <laughs> righto. So uh, back to my PowerPoint here. Righto. Uh, next slide. Okay. So um, as I said, you can um, you can set the um, the unit to look at what's going on at the input. You can um, look at it in terms of <laughs> Um, applying a sweep signal to the input, having a look at what the output is, um, and so on. So what, I'm, what I want to do, um, I'm actually going to um, give a little demonstration um, on the table here. Using so what we're going to try and do here is try and do a uh, demonstration. So as I said, little box. Um, oops, I've got to put it in the right place. Uh, it's like flying a helicopter. Yeah, you're right. Okay, right <laughs> in the middle. Right. Is right it going out of the shed as it might? No. <laughs> <laughs> Righto. So, um, okay. So, what I'm going to do, I, I have a little. Uh, a little TVI filter here. So 54 to 900 megahertz. Um, probably cost $5 at Tandy, back when we had a Tandy. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to put a 50 ohm termination on the end. Should be 75 ohm, but I don't have one of those. Okay, that's a, uh, where'd, it, where'd it go? I'll put it somewhere, can't find it, here it is. <laughs> that's a 50 ohm termination. And I need to connect that to the output of this thing. Luckily, and um, one thing that I, uh, I strongly recommend, if you're going to buy one of these, um, get yourself a whole bunch of SMA adapters. So, um, 
you can buy these on eBay. You can buy these from Wears Electronics. You can buy them from mini kits um, because these little terminations are SMA. And it'd be really frustrating to buy one of these beautiful little things and not be able to use it for anything. So um, buy these little termination things. Um. <clears throat> They're not very expensive, by the way. Um, it seems that you know nowadays everything only costs a couple of dollars, which is just just pretty amazing. <coughs> Righto. So <clears throat> what I've done is uh, I've um, I uh, get it into focus. Um, so I put a 50 ohm termination on the end, the output, um, and I'm going to excite the input. So um, this is this is the input side. Righto. So it's connected like that. And uh, So I'm going to put it into uh, load configuration recall three. Does it come with the and pen? I'm going to put it into SWR mode. Yours come with pen? I've got a pen at home. My mobile phone mode must put on time. I can remember how. Format SWR. I might have hit the wrong button there. SWR. Righto. So the yellow display, can, can you sort of see where yeah. I'm pointing? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've lost your <coughs> middle window. That was um, in the yeah. um, so when I'm talking, can you see the display on the vector network analyzer? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so um, yeah, when I'm when I'm talking, you should have it on the on the screen. Can you see this yellow trace here? Um, that's yeah, yeah. that's the SWR. Now, what what I'm doing at the moment is exciting it from one megahertz through to two hundred megahertz, and um, there's a uh, there's a little yellow triangle here. Um, yep. Which, which is, that's the frequency. It's on 152 megahertz at the moment. And it's telling me the SWR at that frequency is 1.47 to one. So um, we can move the trace along. There's a, there's a bit of a dip in the SWR right there. Mm -hmm. right. That's at, um, <clears throat> the frequency is at 52.74 megahertz. And the SWR is 1.46 to one. So, um, just to give you the idea, you can you can set it so that you can sweep from one frequency to another and measure. Have a look at the SWR as you sweep. Okay, so that's um, that's exciting the filter and looking at the SWR uh, input. Um, <clears throat> now. Um, What I'll do now, very quickly, is just put it into through mode and um, just show you um, what what happens. What I'm what I'm doing. I'm not I'm not going to put the um, the display on, but I'm actually um, connecting the other coaxial cable to the output of the filter. Goes a bit funny when you uh, when you make these connections, of course. And um, the blue line, see this blue line here, um, that's actually telling you um, the. Um, uh, I think it is telling you the loss across the filter. 
I just actually can't see what what it's saying. Ah, yes. Um, so at the current frequency, which is 52 megahertz, in the top right hand corner, it says channel one log mag um, uh, 10 dB per segment. It says the loss across the filter at that frequency is about 0.87 of a decibel. I know. So if we if we change the um, the frequency, say we go because it's a this is a it's it's meant to be a TVI filter down at a lower frequency there like 16 megahertz you know like pretty close to the 20 meter band it's actually got 36 decibels of loss across the filter so you can you can see it um, um, it's yeah how how the filter works the the um, um, the green line is um, is a Smith chart, and uh, I promised Jeff I wouldn't try and talk about that. Um, the uh, um, the pink line, uh, I actually find this that most interesting. That's actually the phase change. Um, as uh, as I was saying, the um, um, the vector network analyzer looks at the the phase relationship between voltage and current. And as, as you get to resonance, um, the phase, it's actually at approaching, it's 149 degrees negative at the moment. As it goes through resonance, you'll see the pink thing suddenly jump up to the other side. It's gone positive 156 degrees. So it's actually, as, as you go across resonance, the phase, goes through 180 degree uh, uh, change. So there you go. Can I jump in with a question? You certainly can, Martin. Speak to me. If um, you had that set on SWR and, and sweeping. Yep. If, um, if I tapped off between the, the load, whatever that is, say an antenna. Yep. And, that, and took it off to my um, spectrum analyzer. Yep would that then operate as a, a sweep generator showing um, me where the dip is? Yep, good, good, good question. So Martin and I um, share a common frustration. Uh, we both have spectrum analyzers. Martin, Martin's spectrum analyzer is worth um, um, probably 10 or 20 times what mine is, <laughs> but they both have the same problem they don't have sweep generators, and we're going to talk about spectrum analyzers at another time. But what, what, or tracking generators? What that means is um, you you can't sort of excite um, across a band of frequencies and see on the spectrum analyzer what what happens. You can um, um, you can do lots of things with a spectrum analyzer um, without a tracking generator, but it for filter design and that sort of thing, it, it makes a big difference and for antenna design. Um, so Martin's question is, can you use um, the, um, the input port or the, the V1 port um, to excite your spectrum analyzer um, because it produces a swept, a swept frequency? Um, I think the answer is yes. I actually haven't tried it, um, but because um, because the vector network analyzer doesn't actually um, you know sweep across the band, I think what it does is it produces a frequency, then you know a fraction of a millisecond later, another frequency, another frequency, another frequency. I and um, it it seems between fifty kilohertz and three gigahertz, for instance, it it probably will take you know, 10 seconds to excite across that. Um, I, I suspect it's probably going to be too slow to use as a tracking generator. Um, but if I, I wouldn't want to sweep that large a band. Yeah. So if I wanted to sweep, you know, uh, you know, a few hundred uh, kilohertz or whatever, yep. then it should speed up. I, 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 I think you're right. Um, but I, but I don't know the answer to that. Um, I haven't tried it, Martin, and it's a that's a um, that's something that we should try. <laughs> well, there, there's some homework for you. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> I, I'll I'll take that on as homework. <laughs>
Right. Uh, any, any other questions while um, while I bring up the PowerPoint slides again? Not necessarily a question, but yeah. Um, the old timers used to use things like two tone generators, and this was for audio work for for checking the output on sideband. But yep. they also used before that in the days of hollow state things, they call them tubes or valves. <laughs> they used to have a thing called a wobulator. Yeah. Yep. And I believe that was a frequency sweep generator. Yep. I and think I'm you're not right, Tony. Sure what frequency they covered, but that may be worth looking at perhaps. I, and they used to make them out of very, very simple materials and very simple circuits. Yeah. So they can't be that difficult. Yeah, I think you're right, Tony. My my recollection of that term "wobulator" <laughs> is uh, is that yeah, that was a sweep generator. So I think you're quite right. Um, very good. Right on on. So as I said, um, the other um, the other way you can use these little things is um, to test transmission lines by putting it. Um, essentially, it puts a pulse down the transmission line. And looks for the reflection. Um, so here's here's an example. Can you uh, are you seeing the screen at the moment, folks? Yes. Yeah. 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 So um, here, here's an example. Um, um, the, the pulse has been sent down the, a piece of cable, um, and it, it shows a peak at um, four nanoseconds. So the reflection takes four nanoseconds to come back. Um, which corresponds to 0.4 of a meter in that case. So on this, this particular display, it's showing that there is an open circuit at 0.4 of a meter away from, from the, the place mm -hmm. where, where it was excited. Um, now, you can change the display. You can make it um, look uh, in, in different modes for open, well, open circuit, short circuit, but it can also tell you, hey, there's a capacitive load or an inductive load. Um, and by looking at the shape um, of the pulse of, of the of the display, you can actually tell: is it an inductive load? Is it a capacitive load? Is it resistive? So, um, so there you go. That's the uh, time domain operation. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, to to Martin's question: um, Do you have to stick to little screens? Um, no, you don't. Um, you can. Um, as you can see on the display, you can hook um, the box up to a PC. Um, and uh, I haven't tried this because I don't have, have any PCs here. I only have Macs and, you know, it doesn't talk to Macs. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> talks to Macs. Um, uh, the, um, you can get, uh, sorry, Jeff, Smith chart, um, but you can also uh, get a larger, you know, display of of whatever whatever options you want, and as as you can see, you can you can see information here: impedance, um, admittance, um, series admittance, parallel impedance, series equivalent, parallel equivalent, ohms and picofarads, and that sort of thing. It's just nice. brilliant, just brilliant. Um, I bought this on eBay, um, as people do, and. Um, the first thing that the, the sellers tell you is that warning um, with the three gigahertz device, uh, you need to um, calibrate it to, or every time you change the frequency. Okay, so um, I, I thought, oh, that, that's, that sounds like a, a bit of a painful process. What, what it means is um, there's one, two, three, four, I think five. Um, configurations you can save in the thing and a configuration will be you know sweep between 144 and 148 megahertz for instance or you know that that could be saved as a configuration or sweep between 50 kilohertz and 3 gigahertz what whatever it happens to be you can you can save each of those every time you do that you actually need to recalibrate um, the box the, and the reason um, on and the way that's done um, it takes about 30 seconds. Um, you know, they, they, they provide you with some um, short circuit and open circuit connectors. You put a short circuit on and you say, um, uh, that's, short, that's a short circuit. You take a short circuit off, you put an open circuit on, that's an open circuit. Um, you uh, connect them together and say, that's a through circuit. Um, 
uh, you save that and, and, and it's done, then, then the calibration is done. As I said, um, it only takes about 30 seconds, um, gets pretty easy by the time you've done it a few times. Yeah, question? I was just wondering if you could save the calibration with the, uh, with the um, uh, frequency sweep. Yeah, you do. Um, so, uh, so you only really need to do it the once? Yeah, um, except if, you, if you're going to use it for a whole bunch of different things. So, so what I found, I was, I was building, I wanted to build a filter to filter out um, the FM broadcast um, signals, which were you know, very strong getting into the front end of, of my masthead preamp. Um, so I, I was only really interested in you know, 50 megahertz to, to 500 megahertz, because I also wanted to use the thing on 70 centimeters. So I, I put those frequencies in, calibrated it, saved it, and every time I turn it on, it's, it's you know, I, I just bring up that configuration and it's, it's already calibrated, ready. Uh, right. okay. so, yeah. Yeah. so you save, you only need to do it once until you, you change, you know, uh, if you've used up all five configurations and you, yeah. you need to save a new one. Yeah, I'm with you now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, on, on. So our little girl's got um, her vector network analyzer and she wants to know how it works. I think that's pretty cute. <laughs> um, PowerPoint, PowerPoint, share this time. Righto, um, <clears throat> as I, as I uh, mentioned, um, the way the thing works, um, there's a sweep generator so that it produces a voltage at, uh, at a swept frequency. So you define the lower frequency and the upper frequency, and it, it then sweeps from, from upper to lower, uh, lower to upper, actually. <laughs> um, and uh, on this little box, it, 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 for, for a sweep, it probably takes about five to 10 seconds to, to sweep across the band. Um, it applies that voltage to your device under test, um, it looks at uh, the reflected voltage, so like an SWR, um, and it can also look at um, the, uh, the output, uh, as I said, for, for uh, uh, looking at filters and so on. Um, and what's amazing is all of that is in, is in this tiny little box, which just, just blows me away. Um, so, that's about as deep as I think we need to go in terms of the depth. Um, so uh, let me share girl again. Pom, 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 pom. Come on, here we go. Your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Probably the most common use would be as a um, SWR um, to, to look at SWR over um, over frequency. So rather than having to, you know, if, if you've got an unknown antenna, for instance, rather than having to try and excite it, use a grid dip oscillator or whatever, you plug this thing in and it'll tell you immediately where it's resonant. Um, if, if your antenna um, doesn't seem you you can't you know seem to work out what or how to get it into resonance. Um, uh, it it will tell you it, it can tell you effectively that the antenna looks like you know 50 ohms or 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 20 ohms or whatever and x x amount of inductance or capacitance and that that might point you towards um, uh, some sort of 
uh, tuning that might, that might be required. Um, I, I really like the idea that you can use it to test all that old coax that you've got in the shed <laughs> and actually test the loss, you know, because uh, before you, you go and throw it up in the air, well, why not, why not actually you know, test, the, test the coax? So um, to me, it's a, yeah, it's a useful thing. Um, remember though, of course, it um, goes without saying, um, there's, there's more to antennas than just the matching, uh, matching the antenna um, to, to your transmission line. It's important, but there's other things uh, like gain and radiation pattern and polarization and blah, 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 blah. Lots, lots, of, lots of other things. So it's, it's only part of, the, part of the puzzle, but I reckon it's a, it's a, terrific, uh, a terrific little, uh, little box. Um, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> if you're gonna buy one of these, make sure that you also buy some adapters and connectors for the SMA um, connectors. Otherwise, I, I, I would think it would be extremely frustrating if you got your nice little box and you couldn't plug it into anything. <laughs> so, so when I bought this, I, I, I went to Wes Electronics and I, I just bought a whole bunch of connectors and things because, you know, sure, sure enough, you're going to need them. So uh, that uh, B and C to SMA and things like that. Mm -hmm. All right, um, nearly there, folks. So, so bear with me. Uh, no, wrong one. This one. Righto. So um, we've, we've talked about um, these things, what it is, um, how does it work roughly, uh, what can you use it for. Uh, as I said, um, <clears throat> there are two models available on eBay at the moment. Um, the 900 megahertz one, and it's called a Nano VNA, N-A-N-O, Nano, as in like um, 10 to the minus nine, Nano VNA. Um, and the other one is called either a Nano VNA V2, like version two. It's also called an SAA V2. Now, um, it's a very strange arrangement. Why, why would anybody you know, build these things in such quantity that they can sell them for you know, $130 or you know, $60 for the, the 900 megahertz one? Um, it's got me beat. <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't know um, why or how, how that could be, but, but it is. And, it, and it, the manual that comes with it implies that somebody's designed it um, and the design has become public, you know, accessible to the public, so no copyright on it. And a whole bunch of different people have, um, uh, have, have, um, uh, started making them. So whichever one you buy, you're not going to know um, uh, who's made yours. Um, it could, you could get a good one, you could get a bad one. Same. For instance, I, I heard, um, uh, was it Baz who had the VNA in there, the meeting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Baz, <clears throat> um, I heard Baz say that his didn't come with a battery, um, which, which isn't a major drama. I mean, uh, it's, it's kind of nice that um, that this one has a battery because you don't have any cables hanging around. If for if if you don't have a battery in yours, you just plug it in um, via a USB to to a you know USB type power supply. Um, but uh, this this one um, in the ad it said you know complete with battery sort of thing, and, and I bought the one with with the battery in it. Um, and um, yep, yeah, set of Connectors and adapters, I think, is the uh, is is the bottom line. Um, righto. So let me uh, stop sharing that and start sharing this one. 
Righto, that is um, the bottom line. Um, uh, that is my uh, my thoughts on this beaut little device. Um, I've, uh, as I said, I bought it about two weeks ago, uh, and I think it's just the duck's guts. <laughs> <laughs> so, any any uh, any questions? Looks uh, like a good piece of kit, actually. Mm. Yeah, it certainly does. It's it's interesting to hear your thoughts, Mark. Um, as as we said on the weekend when we spoke, I'd, I'd been looking at one of these online, or a couple of them online, and, and you read some of the stories, and they're just like what what you say. And but but you read stories like that on the internet, and you don't know you know if they're true. Mm -hmm. but they're all saying exactly what you say that they're they're the bee's knees, that they're just an extraordinary piece of piece of kit. Um, and that's why when you showed yours last Tuesday, that um, you know, I thought perhaps it would be a great idea to uh, to get your thoughts because uh, whilst we may not trust uh, uh, testimonials on the internet, we certainly trust uh, them from your good self. So, yeah, yeah. I'll put them in order in tonight. <laughs> yeah, of course, when you when you when you buy on eBay, who knows? You know, I I. Um, I will nearly always, if I can get, if I can, I'll, I'll buy from an Australian seller on eBay. So, so you know, if, if, it, if, it's, if, if it doesn't work, at least you've got some chance of, of getting a replacement. So, you know, it's cheaper, yeah. cheaper if you buy from China, but I, I prefer to buy from a local, local uh, supplier. Um, and you, you don't know what you're gonna get. It, it may work, it may not. Um, it may come with a battery, it may not. Who, who knows, um, might be damaged, but... Uh, well, at the moment, yeah. you may not get it, you know, stuff takes mm. months and yeah. months. Yeah, that's true. Well, well, actually, as I said to you, Jeff, um, <laughs> um, I think I ordered it on a Thursday. And we, we live in a rural location here, so, you know, postal service is pretty hit and miss. Um, I ordered it on a Saturday, and would you believe the, the postie came around on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> and and delivered the thing, so um, it it took it took only three days to get, <laughs> get here. So, so I was uh, I was pretty happy, uh, pretty happy. I, I I don't know why he works some, sometimes on Sundays, but anyway, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway, any other any other questions on this little box? I'm just listening to another satellite coming over. By the way, I bought mine from um, through Banggood. So it took four weeks, came from China. Okay. I spat my dummy when there was no battery. Um, there is a Facebook page, by the way. Uh -huh. yeah. So you go on Facebook and look up Nano VNA. There's a whole Facebook, loads of people in there. And I'll come there and spot my dummy about no battery. But what the answer was, they don't want to um, send the batteries, because they're dangerous batteries, lithium, something like that, via mail. They're not allowed to do it. So be careful where you buy it, make sure you get a battery. And when I complained about it, they said, well, on the website I bought it from, it didn't say there was a battery, but it didn't say there wasn't one either. Yeah, So you get onto Facebook, it, um, there's a lot of people on there. There's some, I suppose, experts and a lot of other people that know nothing about them. And there's a lot of information on there about them. Yeah, that's, uh, yep. Yeah. I beware, I guess. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I, I think I, I, I did the same. I, I wanted to build this filter. How am I going to do it? You know, uh, okay, I think, um, and I, I was actually listening on the Riverino repeater network. So there's a bunch of two meter repeaters all connected together um, uh, to the west of us. And um, somebody was saying, oh, I've just ordered this nano VNA and, and, it's, and it's the duck's guts. And, I thought, hmm, what's a VNA? <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I had to sort of scratch my head, and I looked it up, and I, oh, this looks pretty good. And, and you know, from because I'm from the old school, I suppose, and and um, I just can't just can't believe what it can do. And and I, I promise not to talk about Smith charts, but but um, um, it is just so powerful. <laughs> yeah. Smith charts might be a topic for another night. Either that or Jones plugs. Jones plugs. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, you had a uh, ST5 teleprinter, did you? 
with the Jones plug on it. Plug, uh... <laughs> I, I had a, I had a teletype. Yeah, an ST uh, Creed Seven B or an ST Five, one of those old teletypes. Yeah, uh, that's the one I've had one too. Yeah, <laughs> I had two. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I had the, I had the Siemens 100, was it? Oh, Martin, yeah, that is Siemens. so flash. Yeah. yeah, I upgraded to a Siemens 100 as well, Martin. Oh. Yeah, a great one. Was, wasn't, wasn't that fun where your, your hobby, um, you had this, not only did you get to play with toys, you ended up with dirty fingers, a smelly radio shack, and a noisy radio shack because of all the, yes. the oil and <laughs> dust. <laughs> what what good fun. It was great fun. Oh, there oh, you go. Fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Righto, so there's the uh, there's the end. <laughs> that's um uh, Elizabeth drew that. That's that's me apparently. <laughs> yeah, like front door, door, huh? We can see the resemblance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, thanks very much, Mark, for, for doing that. It's such a short, short ride. Yeah, uh, definitely. Ab ab absolute, <laughs> absolute pleasure. I'm, I, um, I think um, uh, if, if, it's, if there's others who get excited about this little box as much as I, uh, mm. I have, then terrific. <laughs> yeah, well... I'm sure. I'm sure there will. I've been humming and ahhing, and uh, I'll, I'll, I won't hum and ahh anymore. I'll go go and get one. Yeah, yeah, you'll be glad you did. Go and get one yeah. and make sure it's got a battery and a four-inch <laughs> screen. I think you can. Next year's crew, not sure. I just buy one of these from yeah. Jake. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, no, that's great. Thanks, Mark. And, and as you said before, if, if you'd be kind enough to, to send out that spreadsheet or however you want to send it out, and um, and with perhaps with a brief. A brief note as well, because there's a bunch of people that haven't um, that are not here tonight. That might, yep. that might, um, they will have seen my email, but not much, not much more. So uh, perhaps a bit of an explanation, and uh, we'll get some feedback and uh, and see who wants to uh, to, uh, to to be up next for, uh, for for next month's technical talk. Yep, and I think I think um, bottom line is um, we I, I spoke for an hour and a half, and and we. We obviously don't want to make people do that or make people put up with that sort of thing, so preferably shorter. And I really like the idea, Jeff, as you said, maybe combine some. So, you know, somebody talks for 15 yeah. minutes on something and somebody else talks some about something else. Yeah, how about you have a go at that, Mark? When it comes back, you might see that it's a fit of, uh, a fit of some. I'm happy to, to give you a hand on short yep. as well. As well. Martin. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Ter terrific. Okay. Very good. All right. Yeah. Great. We'll, we'll, we'll let you go if you like because um, it's getting getting late.